All right, Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked society and the upliftment of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, also known as the Israelites, according to the scriptures. We we'll start off by giving all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. And double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And salutations to you brothers across the four corners preaching this word in truth and sincerity. Um, we're going to go into a, a, a lesson and basically uh, break down some of these strongholds, man. Because in order to worship the Father, to truly worship the Father in the name of the Son, you got to do it in spirit and in truth. Because there's a lot of lies been going around. There's a lot of lies being pushed throughout the four corners of the earth, especially uh, concerning the one you call God and the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. John 4, verse 24. Verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. Con. All of these people who, who claim who, who, who even, you know, have the audacity to uh, call on the name of God and the one you ignorantly call Jesus, they don't know who they're worshiping. The ones who ignorantly say there is no God are foolish. And the ones who do think that they know God, they don't know him. They don't really know him in truth. Continue on. We know what we worship for salvation. Go ahead, go ahead. We know what we worship for salvation it's of the Jews. God, we know what we worship. The Most High has saved himself a remnant of election according to their calling from the foundation of the earth before the foundation of the world to call upon his name and to know who he truly is and to worship him in truth. And that is the nation of Israel, a remnant of that nation. The only people who are going to be saved on this side of the planet, on this, on this go-round, the only people who are going to be saved is a remnant of the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Israel is the only nation that is promised salvation. The Christian doctrine is a farce. It's a lie. The only people who are going to receive salvation are the ones who fell under the curses in the contract. None of you heathen will be saved, and rightfully so. No other nation partook in the curses. None of you other nations are a reproach amongst other nations. Right. You're proud and haughty people, and you're going to be brought low, thus saith the Bible. The pride of thine heart have deceived you. Go ahead, Al. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Khan, and we're waiting for that. The elimination of this proud society and the establishment of righteousness. We're patiently waiting, through, waiting for that. And sometimes not so patient. You go through hell on your day to day, you want, you want the most high to bring this place down immediately. But suffering worth it, work of uh, patience. And, pay, and, and going through these sufferings, you, go, you become perfect. Which is why the Most High is patient and long-suffering, and he, he desires us to be the same way. Say, uh, but, but the hour cometh, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Con, the true worshipers, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to be able to worship the Heavenly Father in spirit and truth. The truth of the matter is that two-thirds of our people are not going to make it on this side, but through the one-third the elect, the rest of the nation will be brought back in all righteousness, and we'll be able to serve the Father in spirit and in truth. John 6, verse 63. 
It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The word, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Con. The spirit is the one that profited. In this society, you're made to be carnal. You're made to be a carnal man. A beast. No understanding. You're made to just follow after your carnal lust. That's why when the spirit profit him, it doesn't profit you in this world. Because this world is carnal. Full of lust and wickedness. Polluted. Which is why the Most High told us to come out of this place. Because it's polluted. Defiled. The spirit is the one that profited. And the flesh profited of nothing. Go ahead. The Most High is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you say you love God, if you say you know Jesus, you better know him in spirit and in truth. According to the words of the scriptures. Don't have your pastor get you killed. A lot of people being led to the slaughter because they take their pastor's word for it. That's going to equal you getting put to death. If you're going to worship the Heavenly Father, you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Meaning you can't close the Old Testament and say we're only dealing with the New Testament. That's not in spirit and in truth. Saying that all nations can be saved according to the Bible is not spirit and in truth. Saying that the Most High has done away with his people, Israel, the real Israelites, that's not true. So in order for you to truly worship the Heavenly Father and his Son, you have to do it in spirit and in truth. And that's according to all the words that are written in the book. The Most High is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And truth, part of that truth, is the righteousness of the law, which we are to rehearse in this flesh. We will not accomplish it to a perfection, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who decide to come back, who have been called to come back, I should say, to your heritage. You won't be able to worship in spirit and in, in, in complete righteousness, but the way you worship in spirit and in truth is having faith on the sun and rehearsing the righteous acts. Um, bring out... Uh... Isaiah chapter 54, uh, verse 9. I'll start at 7. Because the Most High didn't cast away his people, man. The Most High, did, he, he has not cast away his people. You can bring that up. Isaiah 54, verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. God, for a small moment the Most High forsook you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. For a small moment. We're going through hell because the Most High forsook us for a moment. But with great mercies will I gather thee. And this is the great mercy. This is the great mercy that the Most High is giving us. Our nationality back, man. The Most High is, is calling you out of these by words and he's calling you back into your into your true nationality black is a color it's not a nationality African and American are two different continents or countries that's not a nationality that's not that's not a lineage this is mercy for the ones who can receive it and ultimately it's mercy for the whole nation in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Come. With everlasting mercy, the Most High is going to have mercy 
on you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. The only ones promised salvation in the scriptures. You're going to rule over your oppressor according to the Bible. Israel is not done away with, man. We're still on the planet. As long as you can see the sun and the moon, Israel is still the people before the Most High. And that's a cut on the whole world being saved, man. The Most High said, I, I uh, forsook you for a little while. You other nations have not been forsook. You haven't fell under these curses. None of these curses is touching you other nations. Most High said, with great mercy, he's going to bring you back. What, what is he bringing you other nations back from? As a nation, you people are good. Our nation has been destroyed and lost our heritage. But the Most High is going to bring back his servant, Israel. Psalm, Psalms 14 and 1. Uh, Isaiah. I mean, it's like, got it. Yeah. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And those strangers are Israelite foreigners. You still have to be of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to receive salvation. The Most High is going to have mercy and the Most High is going to put you in that land. Not a bow for a declaration. Were well, you taking a piece of Palestine and saying that the Most High gave you Israel? That's not prophecy. Bring it up. Man. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we have been promised as a heritage, you other nations as servants. And it says that we will rule over our, uh, read that part, uh, uh, we will rule over our oppressors. Um, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. We shall rule over our oppressors. This is a future prophecy that has not come to pass yet. The saints are patiently awaiting for this heritage. We will rule over our oppressors. In the land of the Lord, there are going to be servants and handmaids. So this is prophecy, and if you're worshiping the Father, this has to be included in your doctrine. Otherwise, you're not worshiping in spirit and the truth. This Babylonian uh, doctrine of everybody coming together and being saved, you're going to find out that that was a, a, a horrible mistake and a blatant lie. The Most High has a chosen people, and according to those scriptures, their reward or their inheritance is you other nations as captives, as handmaids and servants. Rightfully so. Did we not build up America for free? Matter of fact, uh, Jump of Wisdom of Solomon uh, 5, 5 verse 1. We, we can get into it. Because nobody had a problem when we were building up all these other nations. But now our nation is coming back into our heritage. And according to prophecy, these other nations are going to have to serve us and build our kingdom. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no, no account of his labors. And all across the four corners of the planet Earth, you got men that are standing on corners in the face, bold as a lion in the face of them that, are, that did not account for our labors. We built this place for nothing, man. 
blood, sweat, and tears, and you and, and you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans try to forget that. They haven't forgot. When they to, when you had to, when you had their job, they remember quite well your past. And that's all they remember about your past. Is you being a slave building this place up for free. And everything that they think that they give you should be a privilege that you should worship. Well, it's coming a time where you got men across the four corners that's preaching this word, that's telling you, look, y'all didn't make any account for our labels, but the, the most high did. Our people may have forgotten as a whole, but the most high didn't forget. Oh, chapter 5, verse, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as has afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Con. And the, the more, the more, across the four corners you got brothers waking up and calling out the deeds of all these other nations and what they've done to us. Preaching this word in truth and sincerity and what's gonna, it's gonna bring great fear because when you find out Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are one nation and they start to figure that out, all these other nations have a problem. As a consumer, your nation spends the most money in this country as a consumer and none of that money goes back to your community because you don't look at yourself as a community we're out here telling our people in great boldness and telling these other nations that we work to build up this place and have not and our labors have not been accounted for but the most high is just and righteous he has not forgot he hasn't forgot what happened to us, and he's going to avenge it on every nation that touched us. That's uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. Yeah, come on. Jeremiah 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee. Come. All, all the nations that devoured our people. Go ahead, up. Shall be devoured. You're going to be devoured. All the rape, robbery, and murder you did to these people, taking their nationality, is coming back on your own head. According to the Holy Bible, if you're going to worship the Father, you have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Part of that spirit and truth is the prophecies. The Old Testament is not done away with because all the prophecies have not come to pass. There's a prophecy in Isaiah that says, when Israel goes back to their homeland, their nations will not war against each other anymore. That's an Old Testament prophecy that has not come to pass. You can't have in the New Testament uh, that don't sin, sin is the transgression of the law, if you say that the Old Testament law is done away with. That's madness. If you're going to worship the Father, worship Him in spirit and in truth. That means whether you like it or not, all of these, all of everything in this book is the truth. You don't pick out little pieces you like and hold on to that. It's precept upon precept. Amen. You don't hold on to one piece of one chapter and not go back and forth. You got to confirm it. Bring it out, huh? Bring it out from the, uh, from the top. Therefore, all they that, that, that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Every, every other nation that touched us and devoured us is going into captivity according to the Holy Bible. This is not, your pastor not telling you this, man. It's Sunday morning, and I can bet my life on it, that in all of these churches, they're not telling you that this is going to come to pass as well. They're not telling you that. 
They're not telling you that Israel is still a chosen people before God, thus saith the Holy Scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament. They're not telling you that. Because it's a gag order on the truth. It's a gag order on the truth of the Scriptures. And the Most High has commanded and raised up men who understand the Bible in truth and are going to come out here on the highways and byways not asking for money, simply presenting you the truth. If you can receive it, receive it. If you can't, it's not for you. Bring that up. Every one of them shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. All that preyed upon us are going to be given to us for a prey. The nation of Israel had a contract with the one you call God. A part of that contract is blessings and curses. They kept the laws and commandments, they would receive blessings. If they didn't, they would receive curses. You would know the children of Israel by the curses. They're obviously not keeping the commandments. They're still warring the earth, so they haven't been put back in their land. They're somewhere out here. They call them lost tribes, but we're no longer lost. The Most High is raising us up to preach this truth and to seal the remnant of our nation so he can bring about this destruction. The one you call Christ is not coming back with lollipops, man. He's not coming back uh, holding a, a world convention singing Kumbaya. This is not going to be a NATO uh, summit when he gets back. Bring it up. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai, who the world inwardly called Jesus Christ, says, he says he has not come to send peace, but a sword. That's death, man. Back in Matthew. And with the same power he had to heal people, bring people back to life, He's going to use it to put people to death. Right. He said, he said, I would not, cut. when he comes back in, um, in Revelation with the kingdom, he says, I would not come to you as a man. Yeah. Paraphrase or something like that. And I say, he said, I will not meet thee as a man. Meet thee as a man coming. Coming with angelic power. I got, I got, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Sec, uh, this is Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the Most High and that obey not the gospel of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That obey not the gospel, that know not the Most High. In John it says, you. You don't know who you worship. He told a lady, you don't know who you worship. The God, the Most High is the Spirit. You have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The gospel is the truth. Everything else that's going on out here it is, is a twisted doctrine, a perversion of the scriptures. Where your pastor goes to theology school and he learns how to maneuver through certain parts of the Bible that's a little rough because it might slow his money down. <laughs> So he, he, he finds a way to twist things and make it seem like, oh, it's a new doctrine. The Most High didn't change, y'all. Or, or, or no, no, the Most High did change, y'all. It's a lot here. The Most High changed all nations. All nations. Israel, they, they fucked it up. They messed it up. They're no longer a nation. Now, it's a, it's a get in the, hey, get in the heaven free card. All you got to do is say you believe. You in